Hello everyone, Just Podcast TV is here. Episode Please don't forget four. to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon guest. to get notified on new contents. At the same time, Vanessa, who was about to walk out of the crowd, stopped in her tracks. Through the gap between the crowd, she looked at James with an even more curious smile. She felt that this scene was getting more and more intriguing. This man was full of surprises. Through her observations during this period, she had finally figured out a part of the story between Natalie, Matt, and James. It was only at this moment that she understood that James had been tolerating their ridicule and sarcasm, only waiting for the delivery man to arrive. In this farce, James seemed to be in a passive position. He was constantly mocked and insulted by them, and they even suspected him of being a thief. But in reality, he was the real director behind this whole skit. He was directing a big show, a good show for his audience. Natalie and Matt were making things difficult for James, taunting and humiliating him. But in the end, when the delivery man arrived, he didn't even need James to explain anything. Just his arrival was enough to reveal everything to the spectators. To James, his ex-girlfriend Natalie was just a clown who was disgracing herself in front of everyone. Therefore, Vanessa decided to continue hiding in the crowd and watch James's good show. James was not in a hurry to sign for the express delivery. He just politely nodded to the courier and turned around to look at Natalie, Matt, and Mr. Williams. The corner of his mouth rose slightly, and he gradually exposed a splendid expression. At this moment, although James did not say anything, his gaze was like a silent slap to the trio's faces. One by one, he had slapped every single one of them, and it was a silent yet resounding slap. Natalie's expression turned ugly. Matt's expression did not look good either. Mr. Williams had no idea what to do when faced with such a sudden reversal. The surrounding guests began to discuss amongst themselves. They all glanced at Natalie, Matt, and Mr. Williams while talking. This instantly made the trio's faces look even worse. At this moment, they wished they could dig a hole and hide from the embarrassment. James finally turned around and signed his express delivery. He had thoroughly enjoyed the process. He liked the feeling of Natalie getting slapped in the face, so, so he deliberately slowed down the signing of the express delivery. He wanted to let Natalie suffer the torment of being pointed at by the crowd for a while longer. He would not show mercy to her now because this was what this bitch asked for. This was the humiliation she deserved. However, how could Natalie be willing to let James take advantage of her? She would not let him off the hook so easily. Wait! Just as James finished signing the delivery and was about to head back to his private room, Natalie suddenly rushed forward like a madman and stopped him. Natalie, what do you want now? James did not even want to look at her. He frowned and said impatiently, Mr. Williams, everyone, we were all deceived by this guy. The courier is clearly his accomplice. They want to use this method to get away with the act tonight. Ha <laughs> ha, James. If I'm not wrong, you must be looking for a corner to hide first and then escape when everyone is not paying attention, right? Natalie looked at James and questioned him with a sharp gaze. She started laughing as if she was admiring her intelligence and wisdom. Natalie, you really know how to tell a story, but unfortunately, I'm not the main character in your story tonight. Please, don't be so bored. Save some face for yourself. Don't come and disgust me again. James said calmly, but the content of his words did not give Natalie any face. Natalie did not take James's words seriously. She now firmly believed that her judgment was correct. This guy was hiding something. James, you still want to deny it? In my opinion, your express delivery is just a cover-up. A sinister smile flashed across Natalie's eyes as she continued. Why do you say that? James was not angry that Natalie was framing him like this. He only looked at her with a grin adorning his face as he calmly asked. Hmph, how can you appear on the third floor with your dirty outfit? This is the biggest suspicion. According to the restaurant's rules, it's impossible to enter this place without appropriate dressing. 
Natalie felt that she was getting a whole lot smarter. When she said this, she was beaming with joy. She even looked at Matt and gave him a flirtatious look to show off her ability. That's right, James. Why don't you tell us how you got here? Matt also chimed in at this time. Although Natalie's brainless deduction was just here spouting nonsense, with Matt's agreement, the surrounding guests actually believed her. They all looked at James as if waiting to see how he would answer this time. After all, his attire was indeed too shabby. It was somewhat abnormal to appear here. Why should I answer your questions? You guys are just too bored in your lives. James didn't want to waste any more time with them. He refused to entertain them and walked away. Vanessa was still in the private room. He did not want to let her wait for too long. However, James's actions made Natalie think that he had been seen through by her. He had become angry from embarrassment and wanted to escape. The surrounding guests, Matt and Mr. Williams, also felt the same. Mr. Williams, this guy wants to escape. Quickly stop him. Don't let him run away, Natalie quickly said to Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams suddenly dashed forward and stopped James with his hands. He shouted, Stop! Stop right there, you thief! You still want to leave today? Matt also joined the floor manager. Natalie took advantage of James not paying attention to her and rushed over to him. She snatched the express delivery from his hand. But even stranger was that James did not stop Natalie. Instead, he revealed a strange smile on his face. Friends, watch carefully. I'll get the stolen goods now. Natalie revealed a ferocious expression and ripped open the express delivery in front of everyone. The express delivery box fell to the ground, bouncing off on the floor. However, it was not the stolen things that Natalie had imagined in her mind, but ten red real estate certificates. Those scattered real estate certificates were exceptionally eye-catching under the extravagant lights on the third floor. At the same time, they also attracted the gazes of all the surrounding guests. At this time, one of the property certificates was flipped open. It happened to be on the page that marked the owner of the property. In there, the name of the owner was clearly written, James Tucker. This meant that the property ownership certificate belonged to James. However, this wasn't what shocked them. After all, every guest here was somebody with a high status in town. It wasn't strange for them to own a property or two. What shocked them the most was that the landmark on the property certificate was actually the entire 53rd floor of the Global Financial Center. Global Financial Center? The property rights of the entire floor? What kind of concept was this? One must know that the building was located in the hub of the most prosperous business circle in the city. The Global Financial Center was the best commercial office building there. In New York, where every inch of land was worth its weight in gold, based on the current market value, the worth of this property was at least $300 million. Furthermore, other than this one, there were nine more open property certificates scattered on the floor, although their real estate locations were hidden from the crown site. Damn it. How could someone who owned such a golden office building be a thief? At this moment, they could understand this question with their toes. Who would dare say that he was a thief? That would be so ignorant. It was obvious that James was not a thief at all. He was the most distinguished guest here tonight. Episode 5. Self-Inflicted. At this moment, Natalie was stunned, Matt frowned, and the last one of the party of three, Manager Williams, was dumbfounded. Even the surrounding guests were reeling in shock. They were scared senseless by the property ownership certificate that James had opened. Vanessa, who was standing in the crowd, was no exception either. Her face revealed a trace of surprise. It was not an ordinary property ownership certificate, but the best office building in the business hub of New York. The entire floor of Global Financial Center. James's identity made her even more interested. At the same time, intense curiosity ignited in the surrounding guests. They all wanted to know James's true identity. Who was this guy? Someone like him couldn't be a thief. He was clearly a low-key boss. 
James did not say anything. Instead, he just kept staring at the trio in front of him. His silent gaze caused a trace of panic to rise in their hearts. Looking at the bright red property certificates on the floor, manager Williams felt like his brain was out of oxygen, and his eyes were seeing black. He felt like he was going to collapse from fear. He did not dare to look James in the eyes. How could he? Compared to James, he was just an ordinary worker. He couldn't afford to offend someone as rich as James, who was worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He recalled his rude treatment of James just now. He wished there was a hole here where he could jump into. He wanted to slap himself twice. How embarrassing. He knew that he was done for. He might not even be able to keep his job here. Matt was also astonished. He was a rich man's son, so he naturally knew what such a property signified. This person was someone he could not afford to offend. Nonetheless, his face was full of doubt, despite seeing the certificates with his own eyes. James was his university classmate, so Matt naturally knew him very well. With his financial situation, it would be hard for him to buy a house in the remote suburbs of New York, let alone in the city's business hub. Otherwise, he could not have snatched James's girlfriend, Natalie. How can this guy own such a property? That's clearly out of his league. Is he a rich guy whose identity was hidden till now? Matt temporarily let go of the guilt in his heart and started to think seriously. Today's incident was weighing on his mind. Needless to say, Natalie's expression was the worst of everyone. It was as if she had eaten a fly. She originally wanted to seize James's weakness in front of everyone and expose his identity as a thief. She wanted to see him make a fool of himself, humiliating and breaking his self-respect. However, the reality was cruel. Instead of him, she was the one who got ridiculed. Although she felt embarrassed and angry in her heart, for a moment, she had nothing to say. She did not know how to deal with the sudden change. The guests who had mocked James earlier avoided looking at him. They did not dare to meet his gaze. Although they had a certain status and position in New York, they still couldn't afford to offend someone who owned such property. James stood there with his hands behind his back, still not speaking. Looking at the expressions on everyone's faces, the corner of his mouth rose slightly. A moment later, a faint smile crept upon his face. He was not in a hurry to break the awkward atmosphere. His gaze slowly swept across the crowd, appreciating the different expressions on their faces. These rich people were used to looking down on others. Today, though, they were slapped across the face by James. And they could not say a single word in protest. This was the first time James had experienced this feeling. He felt exhilarated as if all the frustration and pent-up emotions over the breakup had been vented at this moment. He wanted to enjoy the pleasure of torturing them with his eyes for a while longer. However, the expression on Natalie's face was quickly replaced by doubt. The suspicion in her heart towards James was much stronger than Matt's. One should know that just an hour ago, she was still James's girlfriend. She had slept with James for five whole years and never did she learn that he was hiding such a shocking wealth under his poor guise. Has he been lying to me? Is he a rich kid who has been hiding his identity? If that's true then I'd have suffered a great loss. Natalie muttered in her heart. The more she thought about it, the more awful she felt. Manager Williams finally could not bear James's gaze anymore. His legs went weak, and he found it hard to continue standing there. Mr. Tucker, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I was blind and did not recognize your greatness. He lowered his eyes and apologized to James. He didn't even dare to raise his head for a second. To show his sincerity, he crouched on the floor and helped James pick up the property certificates scattered on the floor. After gathering everything, he respectfully handed them back. Manager Williams' actions proved James's innocence even more. Natalie and Matt were simply making trouble for no reason. However, this had once again stoked Natalie's ego. This dramatic episode had damaged her dignity and made Matt lose face. Her embarrassment turned into anger. Combined with her previous analysis, she once again concluded in her heart. 
Natalie threw caution to the wind. She rushed out and said to manager Williams, Mr. Williams, what are you doing? These real estate certificates are fake. Why are you afraid of him? He's a thief, a big liar. Don't be fooled by him. Quick, arrest him. Don't let him escape. She knew James well and understood his circumstances more than everyone here. James would never own such a property, not even in his dreams. Go away. You don't know anything. This time, Manager Williams did not listen to Natalie's words. Instead, he shouted at her. What are you doing? Seeing Manager Williams yell at his girlfriend, Matt immediately rushed forward and questioned him. Nothing. Tell her not to get in my way and apologize to the guest. Manager Williams said to Matt with a straight face, not giving him any face at all. His attitude had taken a 180 degree turn. Although Manager Williams was just an ordinary office worker, he had accumulated a lot of experience over the years. He had a feeling that James's property ownership certificates were most likely authentic. He could tell a thing or two from the discussions of the surrounding guests. You... Manager Williams' attitude towards him made Matt's nose crooked in anger. He almost blew his top. However, this was Manager Williams' territory after all. He would at most not come here to spend money in the future. Apart from that, he could not do anything to him. James did not say a word from the beginning to the end, but the expression on his face became even more exciting. The scene of them hurting each other without him saying anything made him feel very content. What a great feeling. Knowing that he couldn't use force here, Matt could only stand where was. He no longer spoke. Natalie was anxious. She said to the manager again, Manager Williams, believe me, his real estate certificate is fake. He's a liar. Natalie, why do you say Mr. Tucker's real estate certificate is fake? Manager Williams rolled his eyes and retorted. However, the way he addressed them had completely changed. Because I'm his ex-girlfriend. I've been with him for five years. I know his situation like the back of my hand. He's completely poor. He doesn't have the money to buy me Chanel bags, let alone owning property worth hundreds of millions. Natalie was too desperate to care about anything. She simply told them about their relationship. All the surrounding guests finally understood the relationship between the three of them. After Natalie finished speaking, she raised her neck high like a proud swan. She felt that she had already brought out ironclad evidence. James could no longer continue to deceive her and others. At this moment, a man in his 30s suddenly walked over and politely nodded to James. Sir, may I see your property certificate? Of course. Without saying anything else, James took a property ownership certificate from Manager Williams and handed it to the man. The man took the property ownership certificate and started reading it seriously. The entire room turned silent. They were all staring at the man with bated breath, waiting for his confirmation. About ten seconds later, the man smiled and said, Mr. Tucker is really young and promising. I never thought that you would possess such wealth at your age. Truly admirable. Although he didn't say it directly, the meaning behind his words was quite clear. His euphemistic words, when they fell into Natalie in the other's ears, were like thunder. Sir, you are too polite, James politely said to the man. That's impossible. On what basis are you declaring the property certificate is genuine? Natalie had gone mad. She rushed to the man without caring about her image and pointed at him. She was like a shrew cursing at others. Because I also have an identical property ownership certificate here. It's for the 23rd floor, though, not as good as Mr. Tucker. The man smiled. Then he took out a property ownership certificate from a tightly wrapped folder in his bag. Natalie could no longer believe her ears when she heard that. She fell to the ground and had nothing to say. At this moment, she felt her face being slapped by James. Her dignity was trampled under James's shoes without any mercy. Natalie had pressed on step by step. She tried her best to humiliate James, but unexpectedly, she herself became the ugliest clown in the audience. What made people laugh was that all of this was her fault. In the end, she had to bear the consequences of her actions. 
Episode 6. Nothing left. Impossible. This is impossible. Natalie was slumped on the ground and muttered to herself. She did not want to believe the truth in front of her. No, she did not dare to face the facts. How could James own such a property? He's a poor guy who can't even afford a house. Natalie shook her head frantically. Her hair was disheveled and she looked like a crazy woman. She no longer had any of her previous arrogance and haughty attitude. The cunning Matt did not care about Natalie either. Instead, he deliberately took a few steps back and distanced himself from her. From the looks of it, he seemed to be cutting ties with Natalie. He did not have the slightest intention of going forward to help her regain her emotions. James stared at Natalie sitting on the ground. He did not have a shred of pity in his heart. This greedy woman... He had paid so much for her in the past and treated her so well, but she still abandoned him for riches. This was what she deserved. The surrounding guests also cast looks of contempt and disdain in Natalie's direction. A gold digger like her would not receive any respect from anyone, no matter the place or occasion. Mr. Tucker, please keep your precious items on your person. I'll arrange security to get rid of these two annoying things as soon as possible. Manager Williams handed the property ownership certificate to James with a trembling voice. He was very respectful in his behavior, not daring to rub James the wrong way. He was trying his best to please James, hoping that James would not take offense at his rude behavior. Wait. At that moment, the man in his 30s frowned. He seemed to have thought of something and shouted at Manager Williams. The man's expression shifted as he quickly walked in front of Manager Williams. He picked up another property ownership certificate and quickly flipped it open. Then he excitedly muttered to himself, Oh my God, it's the 54th floor. It's really the 54th floor. He seemed to have gone mad as he snatched the remaining property ownership certificates from manager Williams' hands. He flipped them open one by one. 55th floor. 56th floor. As the certificates were opened one by one, the expression on the man's face became more and more excited. Blood was rushing to his face, and his appearance was lively. At first, he muttered to himself in a low voice. Later on, due to his emotions getting too agitated, he actually started saying them out loud. 57th floor, 58th floor, 59th floor, 60th floor. (laughs) In the end, he burst into laughter. He looked as if he'd lost his mind, causing everyone to be stunned. They didn't understand what he was talking about at all. After laughing heartily, the man turned silent for a full minute before barely managing to suppress his raging emotions. He inhaled a sharp breath of air. Global Financial Center. From the 51st floor to the 60th floor. The ownership of the entire 10 floors belongs to you, Mr. Tucker? Although the man was very animated earlier, his attitude towards James remained polite and respectful. Despite suppressing the excitement in his heart, he could not hide the overwhelming shock in his eyes. The man's voice wasn't loud, but it was like a clap of thunder that instantly blasted into everyone's ears, jolting them awake. The surrounding guests immediately exploded into a heated discussion. Global Financial Center... Being able to own a floor there was already stunning enough, not to mention ten floors. Ten whole floors. Just the thought of it spooked the crowd out of their wits. What kind of concept was that? According to the average market value of $30 per floor, this amounted to a total of $300 After hearing the man's words, Natalie forgot her miserable and sad state. She looked at James her eyes revealing intense shock. She could not believe it at all. To her, all of this was like a nightmare. Matt lowered his head, not daring to look James in the eyes. Previously, he thought that James had the property rights to only one floor of the building, which was worth millions. He merely had some concerns about him, but now when he faced James, who had the property rights to the 10 floors of the office building, his concerns had transformed into fear. Facing such a big shot in the business world, not to mention him, even the family behind him could not afford to offend him. Even Vanessa, who had an extraordinary status, 
opened her eyes wide in shock when she heard the man's words. She thought he was just an ordinary guy she met on the street. Everyone's attention was focused on James as they wanted to hear him admit it personally. James was not in a hurry to answer the man's question. Instead, he slowly swept his gaze across the crowd. Only then did he look at the man and smile. It's just as you saw. Do you still need me to explain? When James's words came out, it instantly caused another wave of commotion. Could it be that Mr. Tucker is the legendary big shot who has been hiding in the business world of New York City for five whole years? The man became even more motivated when he heard that and asked again. Ordinary people naturally did not know anything about what he was saying, but in the business world of the city, there had always been a mysterious legend. Five years ago, when the Global Financial Center was built, there was a mysterious power that bought the property rights of the entire ten floors in one go. But strangely, for the past five years, they had been left empty. Many international companies were willing to pay a high price to rent the office, but they were unable to contact the owner. The ten floors that had been vacant all this time happened to be the 51st to 60th floors. That was why this man was so awestruck earlier. James didn't answer the man's question. He looked at him and smiled. He didn't deny it. Actually, James couldn't really answer him. It was impossible for him to say that these were all given to him by the system. However, his smile was taken as a form of agreement. The man inferred the meaning he wanted and didn't say anything else. However, his face revealed an even more elated expression. He respectfully handed the property ownership certificates to James, showing almost reverence in his actions. At this moment, two security guards downstairs had also rushed over. When Manager Williams saw them, his eyes revealed a trace of ruthlessness. He knew that his chance to show off had arrived. He would redeem himself of his earlier blunder. The two of you, come here and chase this crazy woman out of here. Don't let her affect Mr. Tucker's mood any longer. Manager Williams called out to the two security guards. He pointed at Natalie, who was sitting on the ground in a daze and ordered fiercely. Yes, sir. When the two burly security guards heard the order, they immediately walked towards Natalie. Matt, save me. Natalie had never met such a situation before. She was instantly frightened. She looked at Matt and shouted helplessly. She wanted to seek the protection of her new boyfriend, Matt, but the other party was not willing to stand up for her. He was a dissolute playboy, and Natalie was just an exciting toy to him. He didn't even treat her like a person, but James kept her like a princess. Not only did Natalie embarrass herself, she even made him lose face in front of the whole crowd. How could he offend the current James for her? Therefore, Matt pretended not to see Natalie. Instead of going forward to help his new girlfriend, he even glared at her fiercely, throwing her a look of disdain. Matt's attitude caught Natalie off guard. She really did not expect him to be such a person. Facing two burly security guards, Natalie was overwhelmed by sadness, pain, helplessness, and confusion. She didn't know what to think or do. She sat there alone. Her appearance was miserable beyond description. She originally thought that by abandoning James and throwing herself into the arms of the rich man like Matt, she would be able to live a comfortable life. She could buy all kinds of designer bags and shows and become the envy of others. But unexpectedly, her beautiful dream shattered before it even started. In the end, not only did she not obtain anything, but she even lost James. She had nothing now.